Welcome to the channel. We've had a, a couple of requests about the communications that I use, communication setup on the bike. So today we will talk about that. There's a few different levels of communication depending on who you're trying to communicate with. The first one, obviously the mobile phone. We're just gonna assume that that's, everyone's got one and that's a given. The next thing that I use is the UHF radio and I'll go into a lot more detail on this one. Third level of communication is the spot tracker. So I use a spot tracker. All the guys I ride with use spot trackers. I will show you a little bit about how we use them and why we use them. The fourth level of communication I use is the sat phone, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing. Back to the UHF, because this is where all the action occurs. The basic setup is you have a UHF radio, you pair it with the remote speaker mic thing, obviously no lead, I've chopped it off. You put the uh, UHF into your backpack, the speaker mic, you can just attach to your camelback strap, when it's attached to your backpack, um, you can hear people when they talk to you and it's easy enough to just lean over, press the button and talk back. So that's the most basic level. The next level up for the UHF is to pair it with a, uh, an intercom system. Now for some time I used the Starcom 1 system. It's a powered unit. I used it with uh, a pillion. With the the UHF, it's just a matter of plugging in that into the UHF radio, into the top of that. There's another lead that comes out for the push to talk. As you can probably see there, push to talk lead comes out of there. And, and the whole thing hooks up to a headset in the helmet, which is just two speakers and a boom mic that all hooks up to the intercom. Um, my helmet setup has the, has the uh, curly lead which hooks into the uh, intercom system here. So the microphone is that one. Uh, it's really difficult to see because it's dark, but it's there on our boom mic and the earpieces are in these cheek pads here and that's how I've hooked those up inside the helmet so they're out of the way they don't um, I don't feel them on my ears at all and they're right be right on my ears so I get nice clear stereo sound now just to show you uh, how it all works on the bike what I have is the UHF in a uh, in a mount there. The the lead for the UHF plugs in the top, goes down into the guts of the behind the the, the bike there. The helmet lead here plugs into a socket there, right on the bars. Easy to pull out if you forget when you hop off the bike. And the push to talk button right there, right under the thumb. It's got a, kind of held on by uh, cable ties and a bit of double sided tape. But it's right on the thumb, right under my thumb. And the, the curly lead is right there. Now just uh, in case you're interested, the mount that these things, that these radios go into, it's quite a nice unit. It, it It's held in by the um, the belt clip thingy and then that locks quite firmly into the mount by way of the spring loaded clip which you can also uh, lock in with a, a screw on this side the bracket itself a four hole ram mount bracket thing attached to the back of it by some bolts uh, it holds it holds it in place and it doesn't wobble I've had this particular bracket for 
I don't know, seven, eight years. Hasn't failed me at all, ever. Fantastic job. I'll put links below as to where you can get one of those. When I changed bikes a while ago, getting a lot of uh, interference through the uh, Starcom system from the electrical system in the bike. So what I ended up doing was ditching the powered unit and basically just wired up all the wires to connect to the right things. That kind of makes sense. So now I have the, the lead out of the back there all goes into a uh, little piece of tube but inside there so it, it's a bit of a shambles I agree but in there basically the wires from here connect to the wire from the the uh, helmet headset and the push to talk button over there somewhere and they all they all hook up to the right things so it's basically an unpowered system there's no intercom involved and it's simply push to talk to the radio to the helmet and and it all just and it all just works from what i am told it all works just fine now there are some advantages possibly to having an intercom system so on the i know on the starcom and probably other intercoms you can plug in and you can probably see on there you can plug in your phone you can plug in you know, mp3 players you can plug in gps's and auxiliaries and all sorts of stuff but i never wanted any of that i don't like music playing in my helmet i don't care about gps directions i certainly don't want people ringing me and i don't want to be able to talk to them so i cut all of that out and i just ditched the whole intercom system and went with a really simple wired solution now the there are disadvantages obviously in that it has a wire from the helmet to the bike so uh, there has been the odd occasion where I have forgotten to unplug myself and uh, you end up ripping the whole thing out it's also one more thing that you need to be aware of when you're hopping on and off the bike so for instance opening gates um, you know, at the servo, fueling up, all that stuff. But it's simple and it works. Now, I've, we've, I ride with guys who use intercom systems. They use uh, Bluetooth wireless ones, all sorts of problems usually with um, your know, connections not working right or batteries going flat because there's different, all sorts of different components. To me, the, um, the Bluetooth systems don't seem terribly solid as far as being able to handle adventure bikes. They probably work better uh, on road bikes. Um, the, the connections seem to cause a bit of grief, but you know that said, things are getting better, so maybe there's better solutions. I would love a wireless solution from a helmet, but I haven't found one yet that works well. But the radio that I use, the uh, Uniden UH76SX, it's a waterproof unit. It's five watts, it has the full 80, 80 channels. Uh, so UHF radios, they have a range, well, it depends on the power, and depends on the terrain. So open country, you know, out in the desert, you'll probably have a range of, I don't know, like 10 kilometers or something, probably. Uh, in, the, in the hills, in the forest, it might only be, you know, a kilometer, a couple of kilometers maybe, depending on the trees. And obviously if there's mountains and valleys, uh, if you're on one side and they're on the other side of a mountain, forget it. But what they are also really valuable for is when you might get to a mountain, everyone groups at the bottom with their radios on, one guy goes up and he can then radio everyone else and say, you know, we've got, it's okay or watch out for the tree on the left or whatever it is. Right, Dan, you are continuing, are you, or are you going to wait a minute? I'll move more down, I've got 100 metres, you know, but I'm struggling for me to get out as well, so I'm just waiting for your report. Yeah. Yeah, okay, just 
hang fire. They're invaluable for talking to uh, four wheel drives, particularly in the desert. Uh, channel 10 is the, the uh, four wheel drive channel. Channel 40 is the open road channel. I've used it a bit with um, you know overtaking trucks and things on dirt roads as well. You can just call them up, let them know that you're there because they've got no idea. Channel 40 for trucks, channel 10 for four wheel drives, channel 18 for caravans if you're into talking to caravans. Um, UHFs are really good for letting you spread out. Like I'm talking, you know, 10 kilometers, five, 10 kilometers between bikes keeps the dust well down. You can spread your big group right out over a huge area and uh, the UHF will cover it. The bike to bike ones, you know, they may only be limited by a kilometer or two max probably. So you can do a whole separate piece on spot trackers. Basically they have the emergency function, but we use them a lot for tracking. So the way we use them is we all have them. We're all a part of one tracking page. There it is on a website called Flytrace. Everybody appears on the map on the one page. So you can see exactly where people are. Now these are this is really handy if you're in the bush Maybe you've got to a town at lunchtime, so there's mobile reception in the town. Your mates haven't shown up. You can see where they are on the map and because the spot tracker doesn't need mobile coverage. It's a satellite based thing, but it shows everybody on the map and you can see exactly where, where people are. I won't talk any more on the spot trackers because, um, yeah, there are, you could do a whole section, a whole series on how they work and the best way to set them up and different ways to set them up and how to use them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've possibly got some ideas about the communication options that are out there. You need different levels of communication depending on where you're going. Obviously, if you're puttering around town, you don't need a sat phone. If you're heading out into the desert, you're gonna need something more than your, than your mobile phone. So, yeah, hope that's uh, hope that's been of value to you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.